Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at one more of the well-known and important motivational theorists. We'll take a, a quick look at the work of Frederick Taylor and uh, his association with a theory called scientific management. Taylor, of course, is just one of several well-known uh, motivational theorists who you'll come across in your business studies. Uh, Maslow and Hertzberg are, are particularly well known along with Pink and others. But in this video, we're just going to focus on Taylor and his concept of scientific management and what that meant for how he believed that employees should be motivated at work. A bit about Taylor. Frederick Taylor, uh, he was an American engineer. And of course, you can see from the dates of his birth and death that he was around some time ago, 1856 to 1917. And his focus was on, in understanding how uh, manufacturing could be organized in the most efficient and most productive way. His obsession, if you like, was on management of manufacturing operations and to maximize the efficiency and lower, lower the unit cost of production. And his approach, which was coined as scientific management, was all about understanding how things were done well and then designing management processes and production processes around the best ways of doing things in order to produce uh, at the right quality at the lowest unit cost. And he did this through an approach that was about measurement, monitoring the, the workers and controlling them. Now, uh, Taylor's view on employees, as evidenced by this quote here, might suggest to you and I that he didn't have a lot of time for the humble manufacturing or production worker. But of course, don't forget that uh, when Taylor was around, there was quite a different uh, culture in organisations, particularly in businesses, a very much a them and us approach. But you get a sense, don't you, from this quote as to how he considered the, uh, the, the value or importance of employees in the production process. Uh, we don't want initiative. We don't want employees to think for themselves. All we want them to do is to obey what we tell them to do, to get on with it and to do it quickly. That was his uh, the basis of his principles of scientific management. And of course, it therefore reflected in the way that he thought employees should be and could be motivated. His scientific approach is summarised here on this chart. Uh, you'll never need to replicate this or produce this in an exam answer or essay, but it's just worth remembering the context in which Taylor uh, was trying to identify his, his motivational theory which was around, as I said, this idea of looking at how production was organised most efficiently, spotting through work study the employees who, hit, who appeared to be the most productive, the most efficient. What was it about them, about the way they worked, how they worked? How could that be replicated so that everybody else in the organisation doing the same job uh, followed the same procedures? Training everybody else to reach that same standard and then focusing the minds of those employees who the business decided to keep on productivity, on efficiency. In other words, paying them for what they made. And therefore, the key thing to remember about Taylor is that his view about what motivated employees in the workforce was very simple. Pay, financial rewards, money. That was the most important, perhaps the only factor that determined how efficient and how productive and how motivated they were. So the answer to motivation, so far as Taylor was concerned, was to set targets, to reward employees who met those targets, and clearly the business might want to get rid of the employees who didn't meet the targets. And this led to and was the basis for a concept which you've probably come across in motivational um, studies called Peter rate. Peter rate is paying per unit of output. Now, of course, there are some significant implications if you buy into Taylor's theory of what motivates employees, which is money. Firstly, he would advocate and firms who followed his theory advocate that the best way to motivate employees is to is to pay them based on their output and to very closely control and supervise them at work. That ties in quite nicely and links to this concept of an autocratic style of leadership and management telling people what to do, making decisions and requiring that they implement them. Peace rate being the method by which the employee feels motivated to work hard. 
Does Taylor's theory still ring true in the modern world? It's a long time since he did his scientific management study and the best part of a hundred years since he passed away. Well, of course, peace rate or paying employees for what they produce has been a, a common and popular feature of, uh, of work in many industries for a long time and to some extent it still exists. Just a couple of examples of where you might make a link to modern business practice to, uh, to Taylor's theories of motivation. In recent years, uh, businesses like uh, Amazon and other e-commerce businesses have been accused of operating what's known as sweatshop conditions in some of their e-commerce warehouses. Some quite famous uh, documentaries that go behind the scenes of what happens when you order goods. The employees there, a lot of them on temporary contracts, uh, to a large extent, highly controlled, monitored and rewarded based on how efficient and productive they are. And of course, you can make a nice link between Taylor and the conditions that arise perhaps in, in uh, manufacturing facilities in emerging markets uh, where employees are very much seen as a, a resource and you try to get the most productive and efficient use out of them and you pay them on a piece rate. So we see this uh, or have seen this uh, historically in, in the factories operated by the manufacturers supplying some of the world's best known brands and retailers. So look out for maybe you're making a link between Taylor's piece rate concept, the motivational concept, and the implications of running sweatshops in emerging markets. Just one to think about. There we go. That's a brief introduction to the motivational theory of Frederick Taylor, or scientific management as it's known.